Hi everybody. So I got inspiration by Sam Calcutt at Mixed Up Crafts. I'll post it below. Hey everybody, it's Mary Ann and today I am back and it's been a while. I've been pretty sick. So what I'm going to do is show you a alternative for this month's paper pumpkin which is hang on a second <coughs> sorry this well let's get started shall we all right so i used the longer of the card stocks that were available in this month's uh, paper pumpkin and i cut it down to a nine and a half inch then i'm going to score this and one of the things I want you to be careful of is it can be a little tricky. Uh, two and a quarter, four and a half, six three quarters, and nine inches. Because you already have a couple of score lines on there. So be careful that you actually fold and burnish um, the card where you need it to be square. So just dry fit it make sure that it's going to um, be square and fit into your envelope okay so using the envelope as a guideline because you don't want to put in too much that it's too wide it hangs outside of the envelope and you can't close it and mail it well you you could hand it to somebody if you want to. So I'm going to cut down the center of the front, fold it over two triangles, and there is what we call a tuxedo card. Now, <clears throat> I'll show you at the end of the video how to add contrasting paper if that's what you want to do. And this is where you could add it. using most of the embellish, well, you know, all of the embellishments that I received in my paper pumpkin. The only thing I stamped was one of the um, pieces that was narrow. So your eye, what you want is your heavier items at the bottom or the lower portion of your bouquet and the more narrow or lighter versions on the top. So I chose that flower and I'm going to cut the cake out rather than stamp it. They did have it where you could stamp it, but I thought, hey, this is easy. And just put a little border on the edge. You don't have to be so intricate. Make it easy on yourself. It's like a sticker. Now I'm going to add some of the bling, which was included and Boy, do I have trouble getting that bling on, let me tell you. They like to stick to my fingers. Now, this is the mechanism that's going to help you have these things stand up in your card. It's a roughly um, half inch strips, maybe about three inches, and one is two and a half inches. Fold the edge, curl it around a pencil, and attach it in the card with some glue. Now here's the thing. You want one a little shorter than the other so it sits in front of or behind it. Now I'm going to do it sort of blindly going in, letting it go inside where I don't see it and then press it down. Now when I open up the card because I've already, see, it's got like a little rainbow in there. I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. So by um, pre-rolling it so that it has that little arch in there, all you have to do is use a pokey tool to get it to pop up if it should not pop up for you immediately. And that's where you're going to attach all these little, little guys. Now see, wait, I'll get the pokey tool, I'll pop it up. And I used recycled packaging for my acetate. That's why, you know, saving that acetate could be helpful. I'm going to cut it into four strips. 
and I'm going to attach my elements to uh, the acetate with some pop-up dots. Three-dimensional dots, three-dimensional little foamy stuff. I never remember the names of these things. But I think that's good because it takes it away from the acetate. It makes it really pop off. And this is where I'm going to use my envelope as a template so that I know how far up I can go. I plan where everything's going to be. And then I add some double-sided tape. The big flower is going to get attached to the front. The narrow flower is going to go to the back. And one each is going to go on the two pieces that we put in there to uh, that look like little rainbows. The cake will be on one in the back, and then the other one will be in the front. You could add other things. You can add a little bit more if you want to. Um, I just felt like for a demo, it would take you know take me too long. It'd be too obnoxious for me to to show you all of that. And there it is. Look at. And it's going to check to make sure, aha, it goes in. Yes, that's the biggest part. That's the best part. And then it pops up. And I just renegotiated that so that it sits a little bit higher. And see where it sets? I'm glad you stayed to the end so I can explain to you about putting on the embellishment, the um, contrasting paper which makes it look kind of nice so this is four inches by one and three quarters I'm going to cut one down for you right now and I'm going to show you how you get that triangle properly so I'm not going to cut it exactly as I would had I put it on there so there's that sheet right so this spot right here is where we're going to have the measure from here to here so once I get that measurement, I'm going to use a tick mark to figure out where that is. That tick mark and this corner, they're opposite each other. I'm going to lay that onto my cutting machine or my paper cutter. All right. Let's see if we can't do this here. So let's say it's right like that. Okay. So there's the tick mark and the corner. And we're going to... And there are your two pieces that you need, one for the card and one for the collar. All right? It's all good. The problem that can be, that can get you all messed up is if you take your papers and you lay them one on top of each other, let's say like this, you're going to end up with two lefts or two rights, so it's not going to work for you. Take one of them and turn it around, and then cut from corner to the tick mark then you have your left and your right right that's the only thing hope you enjoy this have fun